glad you came out and I hope you had a good time and got to meet some really good people. And that was what it's all about. But the reason we do that, we do networking, is, 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 is to meet people that can help us meet prospects. And, you know, it's going to be really good today. We got uh, Rob Smith from, uh, God dang it, 5S Sales. <laughs> He's looking at me through and going, oh my God, it's, this is the age. You know, he looks at me and goes, man, you're getting old and you forget stuff all the time. But uh, Rob Smith from 5S Sales is coming in today. He's going to talk about, you know, really getting in the sales strike zone. And and that's what it's about. You know, those of you that really want to do some really good reading one night and put yourself to sleep really quick, you need to go to Central Michigan University and go find um, this master's thesis that was written, written on the, the effects of commercial chemical sense on the catch rates of Great Lakes sport fishermen. You know, that, that was me. I wrote that like in, back in 1989. It was the first time I was published. Um, but, you know, we talked about being in the strike zone, and that's what it was about. You know, what we did is in my master's research, we went out and we took these chemical scents, right? And we put these scents on these lures. And these lures are down there, and if the fish are going to come up, they got so many different ways that they actually look to bite. So they're going to they're going to look for you know olfaction. They want they can they smell it. They're they're going to see can can they see it? Does it look right? They're going to get up and they taste it. Does it taste right? When you get into sales, you got to do all of that with your prospects as well. You got to make sure that they're seeing what they want to see. We want to see that they're hearing what they want to hear. We want to see that they're tasting what they want to taste. Everything about it, you got to stay in that strike zone because what happens is when you're there. That strike zone is not very far away from the fish, so that has to come up. Some fish, you know, like a bass, they're just going to sit there, and you got to throw that lure right in front of them and take that time and slow and slow and slow and kick in all those senses. And with your sales, it's the same way. You know, your marketing is going to drip, 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 get that client's attention. And when you get it to your sales guy that Rob's going to talk about today, those sales guys got to be able to understand what exactly did, did we do to get that person here to this meeting that we're actually going to have so these guys can close successfully and that's what it's about you know i'm a big uh, follower of a guy named jim Rohn, and you know jim was jim was talking in uh, this there's a uh, cd series he did back in 2000 that i i watch it every year and he talked about sales and one of the things he talked about was say staying in your sales success zone so the success zone and the strike zone i think are, are are both exactly the same place so like i said you got this bass is sitting there lure comes by boom 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 we're out you know trolling for blue marlin we've got this sales pitch boom 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 you know marketing thing trying to get its attention i think one time we showed a, a video uh i think one of my very first episodes here and we showed this video of what we call a teaser and this teaser is something that splashes and makes a lot of noise and these marlin will be under and you hopefully the boat goes under it and, and this teaser gets their attention all right it, 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 it gets them going like what the heck's going on well that's what your marketing is going to do your marketing is going to do that boom they're going to come up and look at it and say hey is this something that i want to eat does it look the right way does it smell the right way is it is it doing the right thing is it the right color all these things happen and, and, and this is what we want to see. And then all of a sudden, we pull the teaser out. The fish starts looking for something else to eat. And, and, and then we go ahead and, and we throw in another lure with a hook on it. These things come up, boom, and, and, and they eat. You know, Jonathan's showing you some stuff right now, you know, uh, some pump, pump nose fishing and coming in the strike zone. And here we got this pike just coming up and just crushing this lure. I mean, it's just boom, 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 boom crush it and and that's what you want going on we want your marketing to get people so interested when your sales guys get in front of your clients it's a very easy close for them we don't want to make it difficult for our our, our sales guys to close a deal because it's what it's all about if we can't close deals we don't make any money and we, we, we're out of business and that's what rob's going to talk about today you know he comes into companies and he acts as a, a, a chief sales officer and he helps build sales teams and he coaches sales teams. And if you if you don't have a sales team and you're starting to grow and you need one, he's the kind of guy that he's going to come in there and he's going to help you find the right people that understand your product and understand your service and help you close. They're going to be the ones that just make sure that your clients, boom, get in there and do exactly what they're supposed to do when when, when they need to do it. Stefan, man, thanks for coming in and checking us out. You know, we got at least uh, Stefan, we'll have a few more people in here. And I appreciate it. you yeah, following us out live on Facebook. You know, this is great for us to get out there and do this. And, you know, 
what we're going to see, and we've talked about this a lot in the past, is we got to know exactly where our clients are. This morning, one of my friends, Kevin Beach, he showed a video of catching striped marlin off of the beach. I'm not straight Marlin, but black Marlin off the beach in, in, I think it was Cairns, Australia. And anybody that, you know, if you're a big fisherman like you, me, your bucket list is you want to go to Australia to the Great Barrier Reef to catch black Marlin because these things are huge, man. These are thousand pound fish. But what happens is, and, I, and I'm going to ask Rob about this, but what happens is these immature, these small little Black marlin, they're maybe 25, 35, 40 pounds. They come into the beach and they're eating different baits. And as your business grows and your business comes becomes more mature, what they eat, what your clients eat and the type of clients that you go after changes. And, and I want to ask Rob that because I'm actually going to put together a blog post next week uh, that, that, that covers that. So I want you guys, oh, there's, there it is up there. We got this guy catching this uh, black marlin on a beach. And it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. So your, your clients may actually change how they buy as they mature and as your business matures. And it's very interesting to be able to know that and, and, and kind of what goes on with this. So that's why this marketing and sales, they're two totally different things, but they are so interrelated and they need to be interrelated to do the right things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get in depth in this. Or we're going to talk with a sales expert because I, I know here we, when, when I was in business, I called myself a great tear upper. I was that guy that I went out and met people. I got them all excited. But man, when it came asking for $100,000, I had a hard time doing it. And, you know, it was really funny, but I would do it for other people just to show them I could do it. When I was selling life insurance, I'd train somebody and, and I would go do it just to prove that I could do it. But man, when I was doing it myself, there, there was mental blocks and I'm, I'm hoping Rob's going to help us, uh, you know, go through some of that today. So Jonathan, we about ready to kick out after this first segment. All right. So you guys, I hope we set it up today. We're going to talk about being in the sales strike zone today. We've got Rob Smith. He's an extra expert. This is Michael Rage, your business guide. We'll be back in just a minute. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Are you looking for a full service company that can handle everything from a new roof installation, restoration and maintenance with all the experience that comes from nearly 50 years of business? Joe Ochoa Roofing specializes in inspections, roof repairs, new roof installations, gutters, siding, windows and even more. Damage on your roof can sometimes take up to one year or more to show up. Joe Ochoa Roofing gives you the peace of mind you need to ensure your home and family are well protected from weather elements. Joe Ochoa Roofing offers the best quality workmanship with an accredited business since 1996 by the Better Business Bureau with an A-plus rating. We also have financing available with no interest and no payments for 12 months. So don't delay and call us to get a quote at 281 890-0000 or visit our website at www.ochoaroofing.com for more information. Hi, this is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713 714 4
8475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. Hey, this is Michael Rage, your business guide, and I'm back with Rob Smith. Rob, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, Mike. So, good here with you. Uh, so, man, so I hope I set you up, I teed you up a little bit, like I told hey, you. I'm, you I'm a pretty good, good tier-upper. Yeah, you did a good job. You uh, are a good tier-upper. Uh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Closing the sales, I suck, dude. But that's why we got you here. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you were in corporate America. Yep. You, you got out of it, like a lot of us, and, and you got into running your own business. What made you decide to do that? Well, you know, uh, a lot of things, actually. Um, so I'm, I actually started my career. I'm a recovering engineer. I don't okay. know if you knew oh. that or not. Yeah. yeah Start, okay. Started as an engineer. Um, and it wasn't too far into my career. <laughs> the VP of engineering took me out to lunch and said, Rob, you're not an engineer. <laughs> I, was like, I thought I was going to get fired, like I'd mess something up or something, right? So, um, but he's like, no, 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 don't worry. You're, you're a fine engineer. You're just not an engineer. You're a sales guy. And uh, I was pissed and offended uh, by that mm -hmm. by that okay. accusation. But that stuck with me. And a couple of years later, I got an opportunity uh, to transition into sales with a corporation, a division of a corporation that was headquartered here in Houston. Um, and when I got there as a bag carrying sales guy, the guy who was four or five levels above me, the VP of sales, uh, great guy, uh, awesome leader, still a friend uh, to this day. I wanted to be him when I grew up. So in corporate, as those of us who have been there know, I took the jobs the corporate told me to take. I, you know, moved to the cities the corporate told me to move to. You know, with a few twists and turns along the way, I ultimately, you know, made that shiny title of VP right. of Sales. I was running six hundred fifty million dollars in revenue, and you know, at times had sales teams across fourteen different time zones. Um, I was a big deal. <laughs> Why'd you quit? <laughs> Well, you know, at some point you, you take stock. I mean, the, the the corporation I work for, you know, blessed my family in many ways, financial, you know, fringe perks like boondoggles to Ireland with big customers to play mm -hmm. golf and stuff like that. But, you know, along the way, I'd also started to build a family and, you know, had kids at home and I was gone 80, 90 percent of the time. The higher you get up in a complicated organization, the fiercer the politics. That's exhausting. Oh, yeah. And uh, candidly. I'm surprised I made it as far as I did because I'm just really not housebroken well enough for corporate. <laughs> so I uh, started looking for something different. You know, my wife wanted me home more, oddly. Uh, <laughs> I guess she still likes me after 20-something years. Um, you know, the kids wanted to see me more. I, I think you heard me say before we started, my oldest daughter turns 13 today. Yep. Now's the time for daddy to be home more, not less. Not less. Yeah. 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 Um, so started looking and... Um, ultimately decided to take my toys and make my own sandbox. Nice. You know, take those skills and abilities that I built over a career and uh, lend those to small, medium-sized businesses who are struggling to grow. So when you started the business, you know, you, you obviously went in, you, you're looking to help other businesses create profitable sales teams. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing is making that, money, that's it. right? That's it. So what, was, what were the biggest challenges you had now, now you're on your own. You don't have a corporate marketing budget. You don't have all this other <laughs> stuff. Where did you struggle when you first started? You know, I think f at first I probably struggled a bit with maybe messaging. and Because, I mean, it, you and I both rely a lot upon networking, mm -hmm. right? And, and how do you tell a succinct story that's going to get somebody interested and, you know, that kind of thing. I, I think that was probably the biggest adjustment for me was because I'd always had that done for me, mm -hmm. right? So now now I've got to generate that demand or generate that interest. Well, because that's where you're going. We talked about this when we first met. We started saying that's the big difference between marketing and sales. Yeah. Now you're a marketing guy <laughs> as well as a sales guy. You're yeah. like, holy crap, that's yeah, totally yeah. different. Yeah, the simplest way I know how to put it is, and it, it probably fits pretty well with your you know, you know fishing um, deal. Marketing really kind of creates the opportunities, right? That Get, mm -hmm. get you swings of the bat or casts of the rod or whatever you want to put it. Yeah. However you want to put it, you know, it's up to the salespeople to turn those opportunities into revenue. Yeah. And that's really the simplest way I can 
I can boil it down. Yeah, but now when you when you came to you know this thing is I used to be I was in the engineering world as well. I worked for some of the big the big engineering firms in town. It used to tick me off when they said we we need somebody that's a seller doer. <laughs> just like like could you just find somebody like two two words that were so different drum right when you're coming into that b2b type sales thing you know mm -hmm. we, we, i understand they want they want you to understand the product and service that we do sure but if you're doing all the work you, you damn well can't go sell yeah it, it's dilutive right it it's not productive no it's it's not and how do you you know, if you, if you were to go into an engineering firm like you used to work with it, I'm sure that that's the way they did things too, and they promoted it. Yeah. Um, how do you go in there and teach them that this ain't the way to do it, guys? You know, it rarely does, it's kind of like being a player coach right. as well, right? Like you manage, but then you also do, you, you do when you sell, I, you know, you need focus. I mean, you just you just put out a, a LinkedIn thing, was it yesterday or the day before, on, on focus. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really about you know, showing the powers that be that by, you know, chopping their, you know, chopping a salesperson or making a salesperson do the doing or the doer do the selling, rarely are people good at both. Yeah. Rarely. It's, um, you know, I've heard, I've heard so many different analogies. You know, we got grinders, minders, finders, you know, we yeah. got all these, all these things that are, that are going on. When you come into, you know, your perfect client, What's usually the struggle that they're having right now when they find Rob Smith? It's usually because they maybe have been on a, on a growth trajectory and have flattened out or even started to decline. And what they've done in the past isn't working to, to pull them out of it. I mean, um, so the owner has to know that there's a problem. The owner has to recognize that they're not the ones to solve it. And the owner has to be willing to relinquish control. So does it go to something like the analogy that I gave in the beginning that we got these these itty bitty you know sixty pound black marlin in on the beach they're eating eating baits that are this big they they turn into thousand pound fish right they change they do and as a business grows it changes it absolutely does and often once a business gets to a certain you know level of revenue you know however you want to measure it headcount mm -hmm. it's it stalls yeah because they haven't found maybe better waters to, to live in or haven't recognized that they need to be eating something different to continue to get bigger. Yeah, their, their, their habitat needs to change because those, those, those small marlin, they move off the beach and they move into deep water where they're, right. they're eating bigger fish and they're doing this and they, they, they got more things to eat. And it's, it's really different. It, and I've, I've seen that all the time. I, I've coached businesses. You know, my, my target market is businesses between a half a million and five million. Mm -hmm. You know, usually for me, they're, they're going to move on to do, do, doing some bigger things. You know, I've, I've coached some in the 10 to 15 million. And but that's when I got to bring in more experts like you. Yep. And, you know, so if they want me to do everything, it's, it's a little bit different. When you're looking at your target market, what, what, what is your target market? Generally, it's businesses from two to 20 million. Uh -huh. Yep, that's kind of the sweet spot. You know, I've worked can work with bigger than that. I've worked mm -hmm. with you know, a couple hundred million companies, but it's usually something very specific that either they don't have the bandwidth or skill set for, mm -hmm. but that kind of come in and really fix it and take it to the next level. It's generally in that two to 20 million. Two to 20 million. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're having these issues. They don't know what to do. Okay, so five minutes, that's what you're telling us? Okay, five, thank you, sir. It's uh, you know, it's nice to get Jonathan, it's hiding today, I don't even see him back there. There, there, there his head pops up. But, uh, so, so, so we're going here, we're coming along, we're plugging and chugging, we're growing our business. Yep. You know, how much, how much does the sales team, how much do they talk to the marketing team? As a business, <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the answer that I was yeah. expecting. Yeah, not as much as they should. Um, not not as much as they should, and it, and it's odd to even find those silos in the smaller companies. You expect that in corporate, mm -hmm. right? As you get bigger, it's just right. it just kind of naturally happens, unless you're very purposeful about making it not happen. Um, but I think, especially now, some of the businesses that have been successful through this craziness that we're all trying to navigate together, sales and marketing are tight. Mm -hmm. You know that that's that's whenever you're going to really 
see success. Success. Because it, it's really funny. I was uh, talking to a lady that I'm looking to start a joint venture with, and she does some marketing things at some of the other marketing companies I don't deal with. And we were talking, and I said, you know, whenever I go in and look at a strategy, when I go to my clients and say, okay, what's your marketing and sales strategy? No, normally, nine times out of 10, they look at me like a deer in the like, what do you mean strategy? You know, I what? post on what Facebook. I got some ads. Right. I got this crap. And I always start with, how does your client buy? Mm-hmm. I, you know, do we do we have to have a, a, a one-to-one meeting? Is it a three-series meeting? Right. How, how, does, how do my salespeople close them successfully? And then we need to look at what marketing strategies and tactics drive us to get right. those get right them. meetings. Mm-hmm. You know, is how, how, how do you... Talk with people, you know, and, and let them know that's the way they need to do it. It's, I mean, what you're talking about really is process, right? Uh-huh. But, and there's often a lot of discovery that has to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure you've seen this time and time again where, well, what, what is what is your commercial? Pro- I mean, let's take sales and marketing out of it. What is uh-huh. your commercial process? Because both functions are at the front end of the business. Mm-hmm. And there's basically from cradle to grave, from lead to PO, there's... A process and map that out and hopefully through that exercise you kind of begin to shed some light on yeah. where the where the disconnect are. how many businesses do you walk in and have actually done that very <laughs> why would they need me <laughs> they need you i've never done this stuff but it's 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 really funny is I, I i go in and i push i go you guys need processes you need sales processes and you need marketing processes and you need operation processes right. and finance processes and they look at me like i'll go you one you better mean? How many times have you asked a you know an owner that may be struggling? You got a, you got an opportunity to talk because of that, and one of the first questions I ask whenever I sit down with a potential client is, "Tell me about your sales goals." We want to grow. Yeah, we, what is what, what does that mean? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, it's 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 really funny as too. The other thing I see is there's a, some of my competition out here in Houston, um, they're always pushing, you know, we need to get you to a million dollar business. You need to do a million dollars in sales. And I'm like, well, your profit margin is only 8%. That ain't nothing. <laughs> why, <laughs> don't we look more at, of that. why don't we look at what your, let, let's get you to, uh, you know, 500,000 in profit. Right. And, and, and look at that. Mm-hmm. And, and go for it because it's so many businesses, it, especially in the smaller business, they don't know what their profit margins are in their sales. No. They have no idea. No, they may say that they do and may have a conversation as to why they think what they are. But, I mean, until you can kind of run a report and... I make, I, I make my clients do the mini P&Ls. You know, it, it's, 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 a, it's a very mini P&L. So, what's the revenue coming in? What are my costs of goods sold? Yep. You know, what's, what's my fixed cost? And uh, what do I got left over? Because <laughs> what I got left over is the important thing. Exactly. And you know, one of my one of my uh, mentors, uh, you know, he told me that, that that revenue was from ego was for your ego and profit was for your pocketbook. <laughs> and uh, that's the way you need to be looking at these things to to really to really make it um, move, you know, and go from there. So you know, I, I know Jonathan said we got about a minute. Tell tell people how to contact you. You know, if they were they were looking to you sure. know learn a little about you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can get to me via email. Um, you can get to me via LinkedIn. Um, my phone number is 346-224-4594 if you want to give me a call. Any of those three uh, are viable ways to get in touch with me. Well, cool. Well, we're going to come back. We're going to go to commercial. We're going to come back. And Rob, what I want to do is I want to tar- break down a sales meeting. Okay. I, w- I want to break down what is important to be in that strike zone that we're talking about. Sure. How do... How do s- how do, how do this, the marketing team and everybody set up a salesperson for success? So are we good, Jonathan? Sweet. All right, we'll see you guys back here in a couple minutes. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. If you are a real estate agent and are looking for a reliable cleaning company to keep your houses for sale or rental properties impeccable, Sierra Cleaning Services is your solution. 
With more than 15 years of experience, Sierra Cleaning Services has been the company of reference for real estate agents in the areas of Houston, Katy, Cinco Ranch, Cypress and the Woodlands. Sierra Cleaning Services include residential, commercial and office cleaning, window and debris removal during all phases of construction projects and cleaning homes and offices before and after the tenants move out. Contact Alfredo Sierra at 913-439-8157 today and let Sierra Cleaning Services be your partner in your cleaning project. Hi, this is Scarlett Horton. You may remember me from the morning news. We know that finding the right team for your painting project can be overwhelming. And if not done right, a painting project can easily go over your budget. At Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, our professionals will ensure your residential or commercial painting projects run smoothly and are convenient for your schedule, leaving you time for what matters most. Serta Pro of Central Houston has been serving the Houston metro area for more than a decade and has a solid reputation. You can read reviews from our clients and see examples of our work on our social media pages, letters of recommendation, website, and Google reviews. Additionally, at Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, we warranty our work for two years. We offer free color consultation. We do residential and commercial jobs, interior and exterior, and we are licensed and insured. Not to mention, we are experts in painting cabinets. Serta Pro is the largest painting contractor in the USA. Our crews are not only qualified and skilled painters, they are the best at what they do, and we are always on time. Let our experts at Serta Pro of Central Houston transform your home and business. Our proven process gives you more time to enjoy moments that matter in the spaces you love. Alfredo, Mallory, and John are experienced professionals who will work with you every step of the way to ensure a flawless finish. Call us today at 713-824-5166 and let Serta Pro of Central Houston handle with ease, efficiency, and high professionalism your next residential and commercial painting project. Because the world needs color. Welcome back. This is your business guide, Michael Rager with Teacher Business to Fish. I'm here with Rob Smith from Five As Sales. All right, Rob. So we were those of you that are following us on Facebook Live. You're kind of getting some of the behind the scenes, and we we, we kind of figured out what we're going to talk <laughs> about a little bit. So so let's talk about the differences between small businesses and big business. Okay. So small businesses, you got you know, you know these are these ones that are doing a million dollars in a year, but you probably got the owner selling. You 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 got somebody that's doing production is selling. How does that differ and, and, and how do you go coach and train some somebody like that versus somebody that's got an intact sales team? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, for that smaller company that's in that kind of mode where everybody's selling, mm -hmm. you really need to transition out of that um, because kind of like we were talking during the break, who's really managing the sales process if everybody's selling mm -hmm, and right. you know maybe it falls back to the owner and the owner thinks that he or she is i'd bet dollars to donuts that no one's managing the sales process and there's really no organized effort mm -hmm. um, or any sort of semblance of a cohesive function um, mm -hmm. whenever it's just kind of you know all over the place so um <laughs> to answer your question, I don't think I would manage that at all. I think I would transition out of that. So over here, we're going to teach you exactly. how to build a sales which, team, which which is which is going to be a process, and it's going to be, I think, tough for for some. Um, but you know, you said it before; they may think they're selling, and they may just not be good at it. Yeah. Um, well, I, I had some of my client, you know, that that, that are growing, they're, they're 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 doing stuff, and you know, we're like, hey, you guys need a sales team. Right. You know, you're selling stuff. But you're not selling the high end stuff. You're selling a lot of the easy, easy stuff, which is right. great. But we need to really look at who you're doing it. You know, they're afraid. You know, and I think right. that's where that small business owner is. Is afraid was how do I pay those people? Yeah. Yep. How do I get how do I it? Make that transition. How do I pay those people to not sell the easy stuff because the harder sale may be more profitable? And yes. How do you design compensation plans? Which 
most business owners have never done because they've just never spent time in a formal sales function. I mean, I think that's part of the good thing of coming out of corporate is I can bring the good stuff right, <laughs> right, right. and leave the bad stuff behind and, and you know, put business owners in a position to make that transition. So when, when you, you, you're talking to a small business owner and say, okay, here, we, we, you really need to get a salesperson or two in place to really start driving this thing. How do you, you know, compensation plans? I know is always a hard thing. That's that, you know, you know, what do I pay them? Do right. I do I give them a fixed fee plus a commission? How do I hit my commission? How do I get it without you know driving knocking down my profit margins? How do we look at that? And when when you're talking to someone, how how should you they, they start looking at that? I start looking at that right away. And my my answer to that question is my favorite answer to any question. And it depends. Okay. Right? <laughs> depends on what kind of behavior you're trying trying to drive. <clears throat> if you want to like kind of an example that we did before they're selling the easy stuff but we need to need them to sell the profitable hard stuff mm -hmm. you know there are ways you can design that such that they're heav more heavily compensated on the more profitable product the product that's going to take you know more time and maybe effort mm -hmm. uh to to actually close a deal um so it, it really kind of depends on what kind of behavior you're trying to drive now <clears throat> just fundamentally speaking i'm not a big fan of 100 percent commission mm -hmm. although i know a lot of those plans are out there right if you need if you need your salesperson to be doing anything that's not revenue generating, like something strategic, whether it's populating a CRM, whether it's you know doing business development stuff that doesn't necessarily automatically lead to revenue, mm -hmm. they're, they're just not going to do it. Would you do it if you're 100 percent commission? Hell no, I'd be out. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be out inking deals. Right, all day right, right, right. I'm not going to be sitting in the office and doing strategic well, type stuff. Well, because it was interesting, you know, as a couple of my clients this year, you know, coming into COVID, they were looking for stuff, you know, they. They thought that there was a whole bunch of salespeople that got laid off mm -hmm. at COVID and people were looking for deals. And their big fear was I would start working with them. They would help me start doing it. And as soon as somebody came in and offered them more money, they were gone. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a big fear as a small business owner. How do I how do I overcome that and bring that person on and let them know they're valuable? Because if they really drive that revenue towards me and they drive profit, I, I want to pay them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And one of the questions I ask of potential clients is, I'll ask the owner, do you have a problem if your top salesperson makes more money than you? I I, I was I was just going to bring that <laughs> up. You're going to go there? Sorry. Yeah, I don't know if you know a uh, guy named Ark Saxby. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, chief outsider. Yeah, chief. I, I, I got to spend a couple mornings talking with, with, with Art when I was looking at my building my, my, my former company. And that's what he told me. He goes, Mike, he goes, like I'm like the 10th highest paid guy in my company. <laughs> and I'm like, who makes more than you? He goes, my sales guys, baby. And he goes, I'm going to make more when I sell the company. Yeah. You know, he had a very long term strategic plan for what he was he was doing. But when I worked for a big company here, um, one of the reasons why I moved here, one of the vice presidents got mad when one of the sales guys made more money than him. <laughs> and it's like yeah. the dude's out inking these major deals. Right. You know, and that was the corporate structure. I mean, I would love to have a sales guy that I'm paying two hundred grand a year. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would love to. I just don't know. I'm small enough now. I don't know how in the hell do I compensate them until we get there. <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing, and that's what we look at. And I know there's yeah. a lot of business owners just like that. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, if the business owner answers me that no, if my sales guys can't make more money than me, that's not somebody I really want to work with. Yeah. Um, just because it, that that mindset is incorrect. I think so. Uh, and if you design a, a good comp plan, one that drives the right behavior and actually produces the revenue in the places where you want it to, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to afford a salesperson much better than you actually deserve. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that that's a good thing. But I, I still think it's, I see it in small business owners, is fear. It's, right. oh my God, I've got to pay this guy something. I'm not even paying myself that much yet. Yep. How, how do I pay this, this, this person? How do I know they're any good? Mm -hmm. You know, and go there. You know, the, the guys that are good want money up front or, you know, they, they right. want Some stuff. Some sort of base. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That base plus commission. It, it, it makes it hard for a small business owner. Um, so when should they start looking and saying, all right, I've got to do this. I have got to move and I've got to bring somebody on to sell. Mm -hmm. Because I suck at it. I know. I, I know the client. I know. I, I know one of the people that are watching. And I know she she does admin for a company, and she's not a salesperson. The guy does the work. He's not a salesperson. But they got 
business coming in and we know they needed a salesperson, but they just didn't know how to compensate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can generally help with that. I mean, because as you said, kind of in my intro, not only do I work with companies that have existing sales forces, but those that are growing and need to make that transition, but don't really, don't really know how. And, you know, I, I don't have a formulaic way of coming up with a sales compensation plan. Again, my favorite answer, it depends. It depends on what the business is, you know, what's the sales cycle. I, there, there are a lot of, you know, vegetables and things that go into that stew. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be individual. Yeah, I used to say it's like one of my favorite coaching questions is people say, well, I don't, I don't know how to do that. And one of my favorite coaches goes, well, if you did know, how would you do it? And it's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing at 999 out of 1,000, they've got a really good answer in their head. They just don't want to spit it out uh -huh. and, and, and do that. So when we're, we're building, so now we're coming in, we got, we're growing, right? We're, we're up there. When do we start looking at hiring a sales manager? When do we start documenting sales processes? How, when, when does all that crap? Yeah, ideally on the front end of building out the sales team. Really? Right. So the, the, the process is going to align the team. And you may have different, you know, people within the team. You used a couple of, you know, terms earlier. You may have a farmer versus a hunter, you know, account mm -hmm. manager versus you know, your, your slayer that goes out there and just, mm -hmm. you know, adds new logos and new customers and is just good at that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But <clears throat> the process, um, isn't going to be that much different. Right. It, Cause it doesn't really matter if you're selling baseballs or bananas it, you, for a company, they're going to have a journey mm -hmm. right along that from, you know, lead to PO. Mm -hmm. Um, so those kind of things in my view need to be in place before you even bring on salespeople, because how do you, kind of integrate them into your organization if you don't have a lot of those things to find. With, with, with some of the things I've tried in the past, we've tried to bring in, you know, sell, you know, we do a lot of presentations, like you and I were trying to do some presentations, get it out. But I was looking to bring in people to do presentations as well. And I got a whole bunch of people say, well, yeah, I'll do the presentation, I'll close, but I'm not filling it. And it's like, I'm like, well, that's the hardest part, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, it, they didn't it, want to do the hiring. No, or? they didn't want to put butts in chairs. Okay. You know, they, they didn't want to bring people in and get them to the presentation they were going to do. They're like, well, you okay. do that. Oh, okay. I see. You know, and, and, and how much should we look at, at having a salesperson do that? You know, because when I looked at it, I said, I'm going to give you a much higher commission rate if you do that. Right. You know, if I fill the room. You go close. You're going to get a 10, 15 percent commission rate. You fill the room. I'm going to give you 50. Right. I want to do a 50 50 share. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and a client for me. Salesperson's relationships in the market that you should be leveraging to put those butts in the seats, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Or that's when you're picking up the phone and cold calling and do the things that you do that I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I don't know. Does, does anybody want to cold call anymore? It takes us. That's a special kind of person. But it still works, doesn't it? It, it does. It's a, it's a numbers game, and you got to grind through it if you're doing cold calling. And I, there are a lot of companies out there that, that do just that. I would say probably more bad ones than good ones. But yeah, what kind of what kind of KPIs, uh, key performance indicators, do you guys have? What kind of KPIs do you think it's 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 really important to put on salespeople? That's a great question because everybody's mind always goes to the numbers, yeah. right? If you've you know finally get a business owner to accept that they need a sales goal and okay, whatever it is, five million bucks. All right, how, how are we going to get there? Part of a, part of the metrics are those numbers. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's you know in, in in total for the company, then by salesperson, by product, by customer, you can chop it a number of different ways. But I think probably part of the spirit of your question is that's only numbers, and there's really no answers mm -hmm. in the numbers. There's really only questions, and the questions are. What are you doing to put those numbers up? Mm -hmm. Right. What are the activities? You know, do you need to make so many cold calls per day or period or, or whatever? Do you need to have so many, you know, customer touch points per day, week, mm -hmm. whatever, how, whatever period? Um, you know, you're familiar with smart goals, yep. right? I mean, all of those things they they need to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Yeah, I used right? to do, um, you know. I used to sell life insurance at one time with one of the companies, and then this thing was 8531. Okay. They knew for every eight meetings you had set, five would actually hold, three would let you do the presentation, and one of the three would buy. And they, they, their thing was if you did 8531 every week, you're making six figures. And, 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 and that was, you know, company That's kind average. of the formula. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the formula. So is, how important is that to put together a formula for a sales team so they know this is what I really need to do? Oh, it's to, absolutely critical because otherwise they're just kind of how, how else are you going to 
establish kind of baselines for those metrics that you're going to measure them against mm-hmm. and judge them against because if they're not doing the 8531 or whatever that whatever that process is you know how do you hold them accountable and if they don't do it then you get you got to start having hard conversations, right? So yeah, you absolutely need that. Yeah, because it, it, it found me as well as I was leading the team. I, if you weren't setting eight meetings, I at least to go, okay, what are you doing during the day <laughs> that you're not setting eight meetings? Yeah. You know, then if, if you set eight meetings and five of them weren't holding, I said, okay, what were the quality of the meetings that you were setting? Were they were they the right fish, as we talk about here? You know, you know your fish to get rich. Um, you know, were they the right ones? Then if you got them, Mm-hmm. Were they letting you do the presentation? Right. And then if you were doing the presentation, you couldn't close. What was the problem there? And at least I knew then that I could ca- I, I could coach them up. Right. Yeah. You've got kind of windows of opportunity to, to dig in and engage and coach and, and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I, I think that's really important because if we if we don't know what's going on and we don't know how things are going and people are, are, are doing what they're doing, because as, as you, I found that people that came in and... and they they get in these you know sales organizations and stuff like that. They're they're busy all the time. Yeah. But they're usually busy doing crap. Non value add. Yeah. Yeah. Things. You know, and, and we talked about last night. We did some networking last night. I thought the, the importance of the networking group last night was to bring in high high impact people right. to network in. Mm-hmm. That we're all in a very, very similar niche of the, the level of businesses that they did business with. Yeah. And you know, as business owners, me and you both, I mean, we need to we need to remain mindful of that. And it's not that much different than, you know, a normal sales farm because that's what we're trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. We're trying to sell ourselves and get next to the right people. And mm-hmm. it's I think it's easy. And I've even found myself, you tell me if you think this is, or if, if you found this, you know, I go through periods where, you know, just kind of sit down and just think about the business for a while. Set aside some time. An EOS implementer friend of mine suggested that I do that. Mm-hmm. And during one of those kind of reflection periods, I realized that I'd kind of gotten lazy in my networking, not necessarily in the number of meetings, the mm-hmm. eight that mm-hmm. you put forward, mm-hmm. but the quality the of those. Quality. And I think you continually, either whether you're a business owner, salesperson, whatever, you need to be self-critical in what you're doing yeah. and how that's producing. I think so. It's there was a there's a networking event I go to once a month. It was a it was a business and brewers thing. And I, I went through it knowing that the only reason I was going was for the eye candy. <laughs> and, you know, sorry, I'm just being a guy. Um, it was there were pretty girls to look at and talk to. It's not that I'm doing anything with them, you know. Right. Uh, but it, it, it was just hey, it was it was once once a month on a Friday at three o'clock to five o'clock. We're at a brewery, and this is what we're doing. But I met a girl that was there, and you know, I remember. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my fishing with hot dogs video with my kids and talking about you know if, if, if you're not throwing out the right bait yeah, yeah. and you're not going the same thing. But I met this 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 girl. She was a young lady and um, she was selling high end photography. Okay. So you know you know a thousand dollar portraits of young kids. You know high very high yeah. end. And I'm like, why are you at this networking event? And there's not one person here that can afford this. And she goes, where should I be? And so we did a fishing with we we did a fishing with hot dogs talk. And I said, no, where where are your clients at? And she goes, oh, my God, they're not they're not the parents, just the grandparents. I need to be focusing on the grandparents who have the houses in River Oaks. And I go, OK, where do they go? Oh, they go to high end charity functions. Oh, why don't you go spend time there? <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God. Yeah. The she light goes, bulb comes on. The right? light bulb come on. But she goes, well, I've had a coach for like five months and she never came up with this. And she's, this, this, she still went back to that coach. And she didn't hire me. And I'm just like, all right, great. You, know, you couldn't I, close it. I, <laughs> I, I didn't go there to close. I just, hey, I was giving away that, that freemium. I was yeah, giving away the free go. stuff. And uh, so we got, we got one minute here to close. Give one sales tip. You're going to give a company one sales tip. What is it? I know, I'll put you on the spot. Uh, one sales tip. Know what you're selling and the value that it provides the customer. Ooh, the value. I, I love one of my one of my clients. Uh, he used to say, "Quit buying, quit 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 selling to your client with your wallet." Right. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I may steal that. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Quit selling to your client with your with wallet. Your wallet. Yep. Because people will devalue what they have. And I've got a friend of mine, and she kills me all the time. She goes, "Like, man, you're way more valuable." Than what you're selling your product for, we you sell, selling it for more, yeah, and uh, and do it. So I think that's a great one. So Jonathan, we're going to break. See, that's the best close. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's great, Jonathan. Thank you so much. I love you back there. All right.
We're going to break. We'll be back. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Do you want to experience the ease and convenience of the latest and most advanced home security system? Are you going away on vacation and want to have peace of mind while you're not at your home or at your office? According to the FBI, a robbery occurs every 13 seconds and homes and businesses without a security system are 300% more likely to be burglarized. Hawk Security provides security solutions to residential and small businesses in the state of Texas and from California to Georgia, building a custom tailored security setup that matches your needs. Whether it is home security, fire and carbon monoxide detection, flood detection, connected senior care, managed video surveillance solutions, alarm monitoring and life safety. In addition to fire and carbon monoxide detection, Hawk Security has a small home and business integration, expanding security services to a lifestyle solution, keeping customers connected to their home and businesses from anywhere in the world, from their tablet or mobile device. So you can have peace of mind even if you're not at home or in your office. Reduce your energy cost, scheduling automatic changes in thermostats or lighting. And because we rely on our heroes every single day, Hawk Security offers security services discounts to military personnel, veterans, first responders, educators, and hospital personnel. Our mission is to keep our clients safe, treat them like family, and provide them with a user-friendly security system with personalized customer service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For integrity, honesty, passion, an excellent customer service. Take a strong step today toward getting protected and call Rosanna Torres at 832-863-8574 because every home and business is unique and every security system should be unique too. Hey, hey, this is your business guy, Uncle Rager, and I'm back with Rob Smith of 5S Sales. All right, Rob, we talked about, you know, your business and how you got into it. We talked about some of the important things about growing sales teams and what you should be looking at. You left corporate America to spend time with your family. This guy is kind of like I quit pipelining because I, I was gone 10 months out of the year. I missed my, my, my son's second year. Yeah. I was not home. I was home every other Saturday for about 10 months. Mm -hmm. And when they're two years old, they don't see you. They, they're not really cool yeah. with that. Yeah, when my girls were little, little, um, I would sometimes leave for three weeks at a stretch and just fly around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and when they're that little, three weeks, they, they look different. Yeah, <laughs> you, get <laughs> you home, come right? home and it's like, who are you? And, and there would actually be a period where, like, when my, my, my second daughter was, was young, like, she would be standoffish oh. to me for a couple of days until yeah, she's my, like, my, oh, who? Okay, I kind of remember this guy. My, my son would do that too. Yeah, yeah, because I would be gone two to three weeks. I was flying up to Wichita and back, working on a project, and um, he would look at me. You, this is like kind of just when Skype started, okay. and so he would look at you a little bit. Was like, who are you through the thing? And he would really. <laughs> but when you come home, when I came home, he was standoffish, and yeah, he didn't want to. And, you know, the time he would loosen up was about three hours before I had to get back to the airport. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, oh, okay. Yeah, your dad. Let's play. Yeah. Oh, gotta go, dude. Sorry. Right. So, right. so what do you do in the family now? You know, you know, me and my son, we fish a lot. We do this. You know, what do you and the girls? You know, where do you where do you spend the time with them now? Sure. Well, my oldest daughter is big into uh, MMA. Okay. okay. <laughs> the one turning thirteen today, <laughs> and uh, so I like to you know help her you know work out in between the sessions that she does. At first it was easy, but now she's getting good enough. That I, I don't know how much help I am, but at least it's, you know. Does it hurt when she hits you by mistake? She's she's tiny like her mother, but she's quick and she hits hard. <laughs> like even, <laughs> even her, even her instructor. 
director is like, I don't know where that comes from out of that little thing. But <laughs> so MMA, why did did like she just like watch MMA fights with dad as growing up, or what the heck no, happened? There? She was she had an interest in martial arts, and I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, from a convenience standpoint, like a gym opened up mm-hmm. just right around the corner from our house, and they mm-hmm. offered it, mm-hmm. and she asked if she could go, and just kind of fell in love with it. Yeah, I think she's testing for her third or fourth belt here in the next yeah I, re- I remember my son did it he we, we made him do something because he's he's not very athletic he's more artsy and he likes to play the piano and sing and stuff like that but we made him do something and we made him do uh martial arts and the first time he had to go break that board with his foot and he started crying because he couldn't <laughs> do it and i got the video i mean the the, the 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 instructor was really good he sat down with him in front of the people and had a little talk with them oh good and he got up and he broke the board and yeah. but he was like <sighs> yeah <laughs> That's so bad for him. Yeah. So so my younger daughter's into soccer. Okay. So, you know, kick the ball around with her and stuff as much as she'll let me. Um, <laughs> because she doesn't really want help from dad. Yeah. I mean, I played soccer eight or nine years growing up. Mm-hmm. I was never great, but I mean, I, was, I, I know stuff. Yeah. I could help. I know things, man. I'm, I'm a stuff. dad. You know, in the world, I'm a per- you know, I'm actually a real person. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so like that with her, they, they both like to go fishing as well. I mean, do the offshore thing or haven't yet oh you just need to come <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome um and then the my youngest the boy um just really anything with it okay. <laughs> he uh so my wife and i are both from the st louis area so we're big baseball fans okay and so my wife is insistent that he will play baseball he will play baseball so uh you know we hit the ball you know got him hitting it off the tee and now he'll be five in december so he's hitting the ball off the tee and we're throwing stuff around together it, mine mine can hit he can't catch i'm i'm, I'm terrified of in a hard ball area. Yeah. yeah, my son's better at the hitting than the catching yeah. as well. I had uh, I was friends with uh, Deacon Jones. I don't know if you know Deke is with the Sugarland Skeeters, used to be with the, the Astros. Yeah. And um, I brought my son to the Skeeters game, and he goes, man, can he hit you? And I go, yeah, dude. He goes, off the tee. I said, I don't know. I never gave him a tee. Because <laughs> you've been live pitching to him ever since he can swing a bat. Um, and he, he likes going and, and swinging the bat and hitting the ball with dad. But when I'm like, hey, do you want to go? Play, play and nah, I don't really have the interest yeah. in doing that. And you kind of wonder how much you force them and, and right. do that stuff. But, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do and absolutely make do some stuff. OK, so I asked you a question during the uh, during the break. Either your biggest, best, most interesting sale. What was it? You made me think about that on the break, too. And I Still, I've done a lot of big ones. Um, I think the biggest deal that I was involved in was 20 million. Um, but I think the one that, that sticks out to me the most is probably my first. Okay. Cause I made the transition from engineering to sales and you know, that kind of thing. And it was the, my first one was relatively complicated where we weren't in like my company that I work for the mm-hmm. manufacturer, we weren't in preferred position. So mm-hmm. that first one, um, took a lot of effort and actually coaching for me to think about things differently. And I actually was able to convert. I don't even remember how big of a deal it was. It might've been a, hundred thousand bucks or something Mm -hmm. but i worked really hard at swapping you know a product that was preferred to the one that you know we manufactured Mm -hmm. so that was uh that's the one that probably sticks it you know it's like the first girl you or you know whatever you know i think that's the one but i i I have been in some pretty (laughs) it was funny (laughs) just a quick story like i've negotiated a bunch of you know seven figure deals throughout my career and a few years back, my oldest daughter wanted me to be kind of a coach for this. It's called uh, Destination Imagination. It promotes kids getting into STEM type stuff. And, okay. Um, I remember like the night before the first session where I've got, how old was she at the time? She was like eight, eight or nine. <clears throat> the night before I've got like six or seven, nine year olds that I got to start to coach along this project. I was more nervous <laughs> about that than going and sitting down, you know, across the table from a hard ass who's trying to negotiate a better price on a seven figure deal. <laughs> that was more, it was more nerve wracking for me. Yeah. I think my, like I, I told you the break, my biggest sale, it was, it was, I think it was $5 million. And the, the only reason I did, my boss told me we couldn't win it. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I just went to prove him wrong. He, he was going on vacation and uh, he was going to the Bahamas and he came back and I said, dude, close the deal. And it was really funny is me closing that deal was what caused, caused me to leave that company and actually go out with another partner and build the company that we sell is because when we came back, um, our corporate offices were here in Houston. I was in Cincinnati and I was working in Michigan on this project and I closed it. And I come down and I used, you know, I, I was single at the time and I used to hang out with all the, 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 the presidents 
assistance and stuff like that. So yeah. I was coming to town. Mike was the guy we're gonna go party and have a good old time. <laughs> Those of you that know me, imagine that. And uh, shocking, we come in. They come in and they're like, "Hey, dude, you're buying." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" And well, they go, "You know, because you know you close that big deal and that big bonus you got." And I'm like, "What bonus?" And we found out that the two guys that ran the office kept the bonus and they never passed it on. And it was like almost eighty thousand dollars. Wow. And I was pissed. Yeah. That's a <laughs> great way to demotivate your a team. A great way to demotivate your team. <laughs> and the guy, I put together the everything on this project, everybody, yeah. and I went to the client and I said, I'm leaving. And they go, What do you mean? You're a man? And I said, Nope. Have them do it. And they screwed it up bad. I mean, they yeah. they, they screwed it up so bad it uh, it ruined my reputation some. Oh, you know, man. in the industry, which, which, yeah. which hurt. I got blowback because they, they, they screwed, screwed it up. up. But, you know, it, but it sure made me feel good. Because <laughs> I, I was at a trade show, shit, maybe 12 years ago. Uh-huh. And one of the guys, one of the guys passed away, the two guys passed away. Well, the other one started another consulting firm. And we're here and I'm working for a big engineering firm. And we're there in this small engineering firm. And it was him. And he walked in and he looked at me like, uh-oh. Yeah. Like, hey, dude, how's it going? And so <laughs> awkward. It was a uh, little, <laughs> little awkward, you know, uh, you know, going there and, and, and doing something like that. So, what's what's on the plans with your company? I mean, where are you looking to go? What are you looking to grow? And what's 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 the end game? Well, I mean, ultimately, the end game. The whole reason why I started this was to uh, you know have a better quality of life, you know, for mm-hmm. for me and my family. I think at some point along the road and you know in the corporate rat race money's not everything Mm -hmm. to me you know i mean this is an opportunity for me to engage in the community because i mean i've lived in houston for 13 years i was moved here by the corporation Mm -hmm. that i left and in those 13 years until i started you know this business um i had led an anonymous life (laughs) because i was gone (laughs) all the time i mean outside of like you know some of my kids friends parents but you know, since I've started this, um, it's been fantastic. I've met a lot of cool people. Mm-hmm. I'll even include even me, you. even me, even you, even me, yeah. <laughs> even you. I've worked with some very interesting business owners <laughs> and met some real characters. So it's it's fantastic. So I mean, you, asked to, you know about the end game. I just I want to keep doing this and you know keep growing my practice. And so I'm you're going to grow it up and it. make this a sellable asset one day, or you know, that's it's, not necessarily. I, I don't have an exit plan. Okay, you, you know. Really? I, people ask me that, and I feel bad that I don't have a better answer. That's why me as a coach. What's your exit plan? My, <laughs> we, we can't build it you know, if you, you don't know you, what the heck we're you building. Run, you run your business like you're going to run it forever until mm-hmm. the day you sell it. There, right? Well, kind of. <laughs> that's why you don't get the top value for it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we hear that all the time. We do, we do it all the time. So, um, you know, again, this is just the, the talked about. The, I think what we met nine months ago, almost a year ago. Yeah, it sounds uh, About right. a year ago. And we connected on Facebook. I don't think, not Facebook, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I don't even know how we do it. I don't I either. Don't even remember. I, we just yeah, started talking. I, we had a few things in common. We went out and smoked some cigars and said, <laughs> drank some whiskey. Hey, this is cool. <laughs> Let's do this again. We like each other. Uh, let's see what we could do. You know, we tried, we were getting ready to do some events and COVID kind of screwed that up. I think yeah. we'll, we'll take those into two. 2021 and you know yeah. bring it out and do it but you know i'm glad you came on today you know we've been trying to get you on you know for a while it, yeah you finally fired a client <laughs> <laughs> made some time it was for you that was you, all it, for it was you, all right? for me absolutely it makes me it makes me feel so good <laughs> you know it's good to be wanted you yeah. know, no i stuff. appreciate you having me out i appreciate uh you know the opportunity mm-hmm. to come and sit with you and just yeah, hopefully if you know some, around some stuff. Hey, you know some business owners that should come out here, tell their story and, and, and share it out. You want to break it? You know, to love to have you back and we'll, we'll yeah. get in some more things and kind of go from there. Jonathan's giving me the one minute thing. So give me your uh, your your website again. What's what's the website? Well, the website you can get to through my LinkedIn. It's really more of just a landing page. I don't okay. have a big fancy site. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can email me at uh, rsmith at salesacceleration.com, the letter X. Um He's got it up there on the screen there you right go. now. Yeah, that's nice. That's you. Oh, that's before you turn gray. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, maybe that's been touched up a little bit. I got that, yeah. I got that same photo up on <laughs> yeah, Some of the people that you connect with on LinkedIn, and then you get on like a Zoom, or you go meet them in person, like, wow, how yeah, old yeah, is yeah, that yeah. picture? How old is that picture? I, I, yeah, I got a lady that um, she's in sales, and uh, her picture's on her on her card and I'm like man I don't know when that glamour shot was taken but it was long ago <laughs> it was like in the mall in the 80s <laughs> yes yes alright but yeah this is Michael Rager Teach Business of Fish get out 
Follow us on the Teacher Business to Fish, uh, you know, website.